G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now in this video, I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about and walking through tasks in Microsoft Loop. So as we know, across the Microsoft 365 platform, we've got a number of different uh, applications that allow us to manage our tasks, whether it's personal tasks or whether it is team related tasks. Now, Microsoft Loop introduces a, uh, a tasks loop component. So we're gonna take a look at how we add a task uh, loop component, where that integrates across the Microsoft 365 platform and how we assign people tasks and how we manage these uh, moving forward outside of Microsoft Loop as well. So let's just dive in and get started. And you can see that I'm on the Microsoft Loop uh, dashboard and I can see that I've got a couple of loop workspaces that are up and running for me. So I'm gonna jump into understanding Microsoft Loop and I'm presented with this particular workspace. Now we can see here that I've got two pages, all right? So I've got a, a product wiki and I've got meeting notes as a page. Now if I scroll down this meeting notes page, what we'll see is that we've got this section here called tasks and we've already added here a task list. Now to add a task task list to a loop page, we hit the forward slash button and then one of the items or components that we can add is the task list. So we simply go add task list and then we have got ourselves a task list inserted into our page, all right? So we can see here that we've got a couple of different options here uh, across the top of this component, all right? So we can sort our tasks, we can hide columns if we want to, um, or we can expand the table if we need to as well. We've got three columns. So we've got a task, uh, the task name, we've got who that task is assigned to, and then we've also got a due date, all right? So to add a task, all we, simp all we need to do is we just add a task name. So let's go um, gather resources. Uh, and then we can assign that to a particular person. Now to assign that to a person, we use the at symbol and then we can uh, start our, or select the person that we want to assign this to. So we're going to assign this to Alex. Now the first thing that you'll notice here is that Alex isn't part of this workspace. So you can see with this tool tip here, people you've mentioned will only see components shared with them and they won't be notified until you grant them access. So we can click this, um, uh, this the Alex's name here and we can resolve this issue on the spot and we can grant him access. So you can see here, grant access to Alex, we can share and notify. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. We'll click share and notify. Now Alex has been granted access, okay? We can set a due date for this particular task as well. So let's give a due date uh, by the end of May, all right? So we've now successfully added a task assigned it to Alex. Um, now, where does this actually show up and how does Alex actually action this or how does he get notified? So let's move ahead now and we will log in as Alex and then we will see uh, the experience from his end as well. All right, so we've logged in as Alex now and you'll notice here in Alex's email, he gets a notification here to say that he has been assigned a task. And you can see that it's come from the meeting notes uh, loop page. You can see who has assigned that particular task to Alex and we can go directly to that task if we want to as well. So email notification when you get assigned to a particular task. Now, if I jump into Microsoft Teams here, you can see that I have pinned the task by planner and to do app in the rail here. And these tasks that you get assigned in Microsoft Loop actually come and appear in the assign to me section of this application as well. And we can see here that Alex has got a number of different tasks that have been assigned to him. You can see the source of those tasks. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see this one here where it's got the loop icon here and you'll notice that the source is coming from meeting notes. And Alex can click this item and then he can um, see where and, and adjust some different settings for this particular task. But where does this task actually live? 
Now, when we're using uh, Microsoft Loop, uh, a tasks list in Microsoft Loop, it actually gets created as a planner plan. And we can see here that I'm logged in as the system admin, and this is the user that added this task list here. So when I'm in planner, you'll also see that we have an option or a tile here for that particular page. All right, so meeting notes is the name of the loop page. Now, when I click this, you'll see here that it acts just like planner. All right, and there is the actual uh, task that was created inside of Microsoft Loop. So we can engage and we can interact with that task on this board inside of planner. All right, so if I jump back into uh, Microsoft Loop here, and if I add another task, so let's go um, review resources and I will assign this task to the system administrator, which is actually myself here. And you can see in the top right hand corner here, um, we will add uh, that particular person there. So we'll assign that user. Uh, you can see that it's highlighted because that's the user that is uh, logged in at the moment. We'll give this a due date of the end of June, and then that will be good to go. And we can see here at the bottom of this assign to column inside of loop here, we can see that we get a little bit of uh, aggregation and we can see who has how many tasks uh, assigned to them. So if I jump back into planner here, you'll see that that automatically gets added to this tasks bucket here. And then we can move this, um, this card around through different buckets. If we wanna add different buckets, then we can do that. Now, one thing to note here, is it that if I do add a new a new bucket, so let's go um, in progress, let's say, now that bucket doesn't then come back into Microsoft uh, Loop, all right? So that task list there uh, pushes and, and creates this task bucket inside Planner, but when I create a bucket in Planner, it doesn't do the reverse, all right? So just something to make note of there. So what else can we do with this task now that it is uh, inside of Tasks by Planner and To Do? Well, let's scroll down here and we will right click on the task itself and you can see that we can change the progress we've got the change of priority we can uh, set the due date we can even delete it if we want to but we can also add it to my day so when I click add to my day what we'll notice is that 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 particular task gets added to the my day filter there as well all right so you can plan your day you can add other tasks into your my day as well and I know a lot of uh, users are now starting to uh, utilize tasks by planner to do inside of Microsoft Teams, it's the, one of the first things that they do in the mornings is to uh, to organize their day. And that's, this is a really good feature and functionality to be able to add uh, particular items uh, to your day. All right, so that also is available to be able to do. Now, what about when we complete tasks? How does that actually work? All right, so let's say that I'm working on my task in to-do. Um, I open up this, you can see here that um, I've done all this and I wanna complete it. So I'm going to tick this off. So let's tick this off, it has now been completed. We can see that that has been done. Now, if I go into planner, you can see that that has now been uh, marked off as completed inside of Planner. Now let's jump back into uh, Microsoft Loop. Now you'll also see that that has been completed in that task list here in Microsoft, in Microsoft Loop as well, all right? So there is that uh, real-time synchronization between the completion of tasks as well across uh, Planner, across uh, tasks by Planner and to do inside of Microsoft Teams and also Microsoft Loop. Now, what about taking our task list with us? One of the really great features and benefits of Microsoft Loop is the portability of these, of these components. So being able to extract this task list and, and, and then insert that into a different endpoint or a different application. It could be a Microsoft uh, Outlook email that we want to uh, grab this task list and then send that out. Or it could be a Teams uh, chat that we're having around this particular item as well. So the great thing here is that we can turn this task list actually into a loop component. So we can create a loop component and then that then uh, wraps uh, this border around the task list itself. And now what we can do is we can copy this component 
and then insert that into other endpoints. So I'm gonna copy this now, and let's say I am gonna start a conversation with Alex, all right? So we'll jump into Teams, I'll start a new conversation, we'll open up a chat here with Alex, and then what we can do in the body of this chat is paste that loop component, that task list, and now we've got a portable task list that we can take around with us. It doesn't matter where we are or where we're interacting with that component. It's live, it's in sync, and uh, everything is updated um, at that point in time. And we can do the same thing inside of Outlook as well. So if we're in Outlook, let's open up Outlook here and we can then start a new email or we can embed and paste that loop, that tasks loop component inside the body of the email and it's gonna render that task list inside of that component, inside of the body of the email. So we can see there that there is that, uh, there is that component there as well, all right? So there we have it. The Tasks uh, Microsoft Loop component really does integrate across the task management applications in Microsoft 365. Plus, with the added advantage, you can take that task component and then um, extract it from the page that you're working on inside of Loop and then embed it into different endpoints as well. So I hope that brings you some value today. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next episode.